The way you do this is you grab this uh, suture needle with your needle driver, in this case the uh, Leatherman Squirt P4, and you just pull up and out. All right, let's open up our suture pack. These just peel open. And you see this little arrow, you just peel this back. And I'll hold it this way for contrast, but you'll see there's the needle and there's the suture material. And if you look inside here, the suture material is wound up inside this envelope as a storage container. The way you do this is you grab this uh, suture needle with your needle driver, in this case the uh, Leatherman Squirt P4, and you just pull up and out and you now have an empty pack. Let's take a look at what we have on the business end here. So there's a needle might be a little hard to see in the uh, camera, and a long, perhaps two-foot piece of monofilament. Looks basically like monofilament fishing line, and it's permanently attached to this needle. The um, way you want to grab this needle is to think of this curve as divided into thirds, and at the junction of the front two-thirds and the back one-third, you're going to grab it with the very tip of your Leatherman squirt, you're going to have to maintain thumb pressure to keep it held in place. And I'm going to bring this up here just so you can see, but normally you would just be doing this right down in front of you. You want to enter the skin about a couple of millimeters behind the wound edge, drive the needle in and out through the wound. We're going to do this in two passes. Later on, with some experience, people learn to do this in one sweep. At this point, we're going to reload our needle driver. We're going to grab again at the back, at the junction of the front two-thirds and rear one-third. And we're going to continue now driving this needle through the other side of the wound exactly across from the first place of entry. And then we're going to bring it up. Grab it with the needle and pull. Now let's look at what we have. We've got our wound. We've entered on one side and exited through the other side. We have the needle on what I'm going to call the long arm and over here, we've got the short arm. So long arm, short arm. You remember from our diagram, we have a long, a long arm and a short arm. We're going to take our needle driver. We're going to put it in between. We're going to grab the long arm and wrap it around the needle driver and then grab the short arm to tie a knot. Easier said than done, and it requires some practice if you're going to consider doing this. Now's a good time to bring over the third point when we were talking about the basic things to remember, two, one, four. The first set of throws on the knot are two. After that, it's one, and make a total of four knots. Two, one, four. Let's just recap. Over here, we've got the short arm. Over here, we've got the long arm. The long arm has the needle attached to it. I'm going to hold the long arm in my, I'm a right-hand dominant person, so I'm going to hold it in my left hand. I'm going to put my needle driver in the V, so there's the V, short arm, long arm, put it in the V, I'm going to wrap one, two, remember two, one, four, I'm going to grab the short arm and I'm going to tie a knot. So I'm just going to tie a knot and you may have to kind of reposition and grab and pull that knot. 
Now I still have the V, right? I've got the long arm and the short arm. I'm going to put the same thing, put the needle driver in the V. I'm going to wrap over towards the short, this time one loop, and I'm going to grab the short and pull. And I'm going to keep doing that now for a total of four knots. Short arm, long arm, in the middle of the V, over one, grab the short arm, pull tight, long arm, short arm, in the middle of the V, wrap long over to short, one throw, open and grab the short, pull that knot tight, that's three, we got one more to go, short arm, long arm, V, needle driver in the V, long arm over, towards short, one throw, grab the short, and pull that knot tight. And here you see I'm having a reposition, which is okay. We're trying to make the best of things in the field situation. So, I've got one suture in place. Let's get the uh, razor blade out. Keep the sharp edge up away from the person you're working on. Cut. And cut. Some things to keep in mind when you're doing this, don't tie these super tight. You don't want to strangulate the skin, which is going to cause um, complications that uh, ultimately result in infection. should be brought together cleanly, but not tight. Don't strangulate. And this little squirt um, gives you some other parameters to think of. So one, some people might be saying, how close to the wound edge should I go with my needle? How far apart should I place the sutures? All great questions. Let's look at the thickness of the tip of this um, squirt. About the thickness of the tip of the blade is about the distance away from the edge of the wound to the entry point of the needle. Just a good visual reminder. And then how close should I space them? Look farther back on this squirt and you'll notice that the blade is thicker. That is about a good thickness to space out my stitches. As a general approach, you're going to divide the wound in half and put your first suture in the middle. And then you're going to add additional sutures spaced about the thickness of this squirt out. So one, one. This wound would be closed with three stitches. Let's look at a longer wound over here. This is going to be, again, divided in half put the first stitch in the middle, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven to close something in that, in that length. And again, depending upon how good you are and how well you can manipulate this uh, squirt, you may get, you may get that many s sutures um, out of a pack, or you might not. So it's up to you whether you put one or two of these in your first aid kit. Again, this is a brief overview of using sutures in a remote wilderness environment, a remote deployed tactical environment, both difficult conditions, austere conditions. This is a last resort and should be entered into with both you and your buddy recognizing the risks and complications. If you end up doing this, this should be um, evaluated by a physician as soon as you're out of that environment. If there's any complications of infection and you're still out in the remote environment, the first thing to do is to remove those stitches, irrigate out that wound. All right, guys. Good luck, and hopefully you don't need to use this, but if you do, practice ahead of time. Make sure you understand your system and your kit and the supplies and that you know how to do this if you end up needing to do it. It's not a matter of just carrying the suture material in your kit. You're going to need some kind of needle driver and you're going to need to understand how to place and tie the knots, understand the risks and complications. Hey guys, 1359, I've got enough material here to teach an entire tactical wound management class. Peace out.